Rami Roy, I'm here for Captivate Creative Studios. We are at Reap and Sew. This guy's fucking up my store. Here with the legendary R.A. the Rugged Man. Yo, coming to the stage now is R.A. the Rugged Man. You feel that? Come on, give it up. Give it up, man, come on. You know, the one and only, Ottawa's hottest nightclub. That's yo, it. Hey, yo, I don't care what the people say. I'm a piece of shit, I'ma live my life that way. I'm a total fuck up, my whole album sucks. I spend half my dance getting coke slugs coked up. I spent quite a few dollars in my day on hookers and cocaine and, and I don't do blow myself, but you know, when you live in New York City, all them little skinny model bras, it's easy. You blow. Hey mama, come back. That was easy. You know, we all know the trick. <laughs> Is R.A. the Rugged Man, in fact, the first white pornographic rhymer? Uh, I imagine so. Uh, ever first one maybe recorded, I guess, you know, that I could think of. If somebody comes out of the woodwork that I don't know about, that surprised me, but yeah, I, I, I could imagine I am. You've written for The Source, Vibe, King Magazines. Any aspirations to become a journalist after your hip-hop career is done? I'm, I'm a whack writer. <laughs> I could write lyrics all day, but uh, nah, you know, there's dudes that can write their asses off. I'm, I'm thinking if like the, one of these big major companies uh, uh, magazines told me to write like a legitimate article. I can't write no like real sentence, <laughs> like with real English. The only reason I get hired to write for magazines is because it's already that street character dude. Sure. So it's like I could write like an ignorant fuck and be like, yo, I be hanging, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and they like, already writes that cool shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why were you banned from touring in most US states from 93 to 98? Well, what happened is I started a lot of trouble in the labels and then one time I was I did a jive showcase and the jive showcase had Keith Murray, uh, Keith Murray, Hieroglyphics and um, Fushnikins and I started I mean we, we had hookers tied up on stage handcuffed duct taped and and uh, we ended up having like a 700 man riot and it's big fucking convention and Funkmaster Flex was DJing and Tribe Called Quest was hosting and MTV was filming and uh, started a huge fucking riot, huge, huge, huge. And it just got all over the radio, blah, blah, blah. So it got to the point where no one would possibly book me and no one would, and if anyone booked me, it'd get canceled. I could not, uh, I was, yeah, banned from doing shows for a good, good three years minimum in the United States. So then I went overseas and did a couple in Germany and a couple in a couple European areas. And then finally, I think the first show back to the United States, uh, Raucous had a sound bomb in one, a sound bomb in two uh, show at the Ballery Ballroom to promote their record. And I did a little six minute piece there, put my picture in the Village Voice, and all of a sudden, oh, he's doing shows and he didn't hurt nobody? Okay. And slowly, was able to pick up a show here and there, and then boom, 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 to now, today I'm doing, you know, at certain times in my career, I'm doing 150 shows a year. So, I'm back. Tell me about the story behind Uncommon Valor and the impact the uh, Vietnam War had on your family. Well, just listen to the song. What I said in the song was that because my father fought in the war and was in the right areas with uh, where Agent Orange was dropped, uh, and the government agreed, you know, he's an Agent Orange victim, it's a fact. Um, and then my brother was born blind, couldn't walk, couldn't talk, a day of his life. My sister couldn't walk or talk, she could. She just laid in the bed her whole life. So that has some kind of impact on you, you know. And, and my nephew had passed away at six months old. My sister, my grown older sister, torn healthy, she had a kid that was sick and died. So we had three deceased uh, children. My sister was 26 who died in 2007. She died and my brother Max was 10. He died in 2001 and my nephew Vincent was uh, six months old and he died in 1990 or 91, something like that. So we lost three kids from that shit.
Ain't no real war, Vietnam shit, World War II, that's a war This is just a military conflict Sex and drug abuse in Vietnamese Women's ruin, sex gambling and rules And all this shit is amusing Bitches, guns, this is every man's dream I don't wanna go home When I'm just an ordinary human being Special IP, we chop a gun shit Gun shit, group one with the mini gun spit All miss, kill shit Spit 4,000 bullets a minute Took the Charlie, hit trigger, hit it I'm in it to win it, get it The lieutenant hit it, the villain I've been it, the killing I did it, bitches, I painted it with the revenge of the secret mission, we got to be getting evident funded behind enemy lines. Bullets spraying, it's heating up 100 degrees. Enemies, the North, we hit me. Bitch, please, ain't no sweat, I'm totally at ease. Until I see the pilot got hit, then we got to hit some trees. Taylor Boat and Pro, Crash Land, American Man, Cambodia, right in the end. Take a swig of the whiskey to calm us Them yellow men wearing black pajamas, they wanna harm us They roll the us, bang bang, bullet hit my chest Feel no pain, to my left the captain caught a bullet right in his brain What does it take for an artist to go from, you you from being You just gotta keep going From having nine labels try and bid on you To being barred from almost every hip hop label in the world How does that happen? Well, I was a young kid I was a young kid and I was funny. I had a sense of humor and some of the labels didn't. So I got blackballed from a lot of uh, labels. What happened is I was stuck on a label. I couldn't get off. And when I finally got off the label, I was still getting offers. I, I got an offer from Sony 550 Music at the time and I got uh, Priority Records chased me for two years before I signed to them. Uh, so. It didn't, the black ball game in the business only lasted about three years, but when you, as young as I was, it seemed like an eternity. It seemed like, yo, this, you know, you only got so many years in hip-hop, I didn't know that I was going to be able to be great forever. How does it feel to be mad famous for being unknown? Yeah, it's funny. I'm mad famous. They say rugged by now, you should have at least blown, it's funny. I'm mad famous for being unknown. I said in the lyric, it's funny. I even realized that that's what I said in the lyric, but it's comedic. You know, like, yo, that's like the greatest underrated guy. <laughs> Some cat posted up like, yo, he's the most underrated rapper in history, period. And somebody commented like, if you ask me, he's overrated. <laughs> and I was like, Woo! I got That'll the overrated. Yeah, yeah. No, I finally got the overrated. <laughs> there title. it is. Yeah. There Somebody is. called me overrated. Wow. I was impressed. Like, whoa, you had to be rated somewhere to be overrated all of a sudden. That's crazy. You know, a lot of people complain about the internet. Like it's hurting the music industry. Fuck the music industry. Who gives a fuck about the music industry? The industry. Industry is a bunch of fake ass pussies. And if all the labels shut the fuck down, good. <laughs> Get them the fuck out of here. Everyone be music, right? Yeah, yeah, music will if every record label closes the fuck down, you heard what he said, there'll still be music. So what do we need them for? What do we need any record label for? Hating on me is like hating the truth. You can lie to yourself, but deep down you know I'm the truth. <laughs> Hey yo, hey yo, this is the one and only R.A. the Rugged Man, Dirty Krusty. I'm chilling out in Ottawa, Canada with Capacity Entertainment. 10 year anniversary, baby. 10 year anniversary, baby. <laughs> I am the legendary. Hey yo, people wondering where the fuck I've been At the VIP section, they ain't letting me in They say maybe if you had Dr. Dre or Timberland They say a white boy need a black boy to win I really did change to a degree you know, I'm still the same in a lot of ways But yeah, I, don't, I don't have a stable, stable of uh, cock swallowing with teenage girls to fuck everybody no more That was a lot of years ago Every kid in plays luggage. I seen rappers turn from sex symbols and heart throbs to being forgotten. Now they out looking for jobs. I seen EPMD break up. I seen my little brother Max fall asleep and he ain't never wake up. So when I rhyme, listen seriously. When I spit, I'm giving you the truth. Clearly, who I really be. It's an audio version of reality TV. I had deals from Russell Simmons to Master P.